Hey everyone, welcome to the Live Fearlessly video podcast series. This is episode 88 and I'm super, super excited that Valerie Ricor is here with us to share her story about fear and how fear has showed up for her and how she's worked through those things to really be the leader that she is today and what she's doing. So Valerie, thank you for joining us today. I would love for you to share um, where you're located and then any fun facts you want us to know about you before we dive in. Oh my goodness. Fun facts. I always struggle with those. Okay. (laughs) I am um, in Denver, Colorado, um, born and raised, which uh, maybe there's one of my fun facts. Denver natives are few and far between these days. A lot of transplants here, but um, yeah, born and born and raised here in Denver and um, fun facts. Oh my gosh. We're going to start this out with a blank brain on fun things. Let's just yeah. go with I'm the Denver native and move on. We'll come back to that one. Maybe something will come to me. <laughs> something will come. <laughs> something will come. I love it. So, um, so obviously you don't have plans to leave Denver. Sounds like you're pretty, you pretty much love your Denver area. I do. Yeah. I actually lived in uh, the Boston area for about six years um, oh. for undergrad and graduate school. It's actually where I met my husband. He's from the New England area. Um, but I love Denver. I love the dry weather. Um, do not love humidity. Um, every now and then I dream of moving to New Zealand to just to get the heck out and try something different, but right? you know, it's not going to happen anytime soon. So Denver it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. My husband is obsessed with New Zealand too. He's, he's like, I want to go so bad. He's like, I don't know. He's drawn to it. So I love that you say that because that's definitely <laughs> something that's always like in the back of our mind too. <laughs> just <laughs> someday just dream drastic. Dream. <laughs> that's super fun so what's cool though about what you said being a Denver native native is that you actually did leave I feel like a lot of times it's either people just haven't left to see if they like anywhere else so they just stay there but you obviously left and came back I think that says something about you know really liking the Denver area and wanting to get back there because you had the choice and you went back Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love, um, yeah, I moved fresh out of high school and just was needed to do something different and try something new and love New England. And um, I've loved, but I love Denver. It's just, it's where I want to be. I don't know what it is about the area. It was affordable at the time. It's not now, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's what I know about the Colorado. All of my friends that are the transplants that come to you from Wisconsin, <laughs> they come to the Colorado. They're they're all complaining about the, you know, the cost of living is very expensive and you work so hard to keep the roof. And I'm just like, man, and you're out hiking and like everyone has a dog. So you're like out walking all the time. It's like, Mm -hmm. how do you have time to be in the home that you're paying so much money for? It's crazy. (laughs) But Hey, to have that view, I mean, you have to love it to, to work Mm -hmm. that hard, to live and have that view because Hey, half the time it's about the view, right? To keep the visions of what you want and the excitement and the joy in your life. And you create mm-hmm. those memories and those moments. So yeah, that's awesome. I love that you're a native and you, and you left and you came back and it's just really the place that you want to be. And you know that that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That is a fun fact. Okay. Good. Fun fact. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So um, let me see. So actually Valerie, we were connected through a mutual friend Oh man. I'm drawing a blank now. It's been a while since we've connected. And with pandemic brain, I can't remember what I had for breakfast most days. So seriously, <laughs> ain't that the truth? <laughs> that is so funny. You know what? I looked at it. I'm going to look it up, but yeah. um, okay. So let's start talking about your story. Let's dive in. Okay. So um, when I asked the question, like where, when was a significant time in your life that fear held you back from living your life fully and how did that experience um you know play a part into your life so wh- where do you go in a time that you can remember about fear really setting in and kind of paralyzing you for a period of time mm-hmm. yeah i've been thinking a lot about that lately just in preparation for today and yeah. i have um, my brain has gone to a couple different places here so i'm going to try to tie them together So one of them is taking the leap to leave the corporate world and start my own business. And then when things get tricky or hard or they're not going quite as grandly as I want them to, just wanting to quit, like where, you know, like why am I taking the time and effort to do all of this? And then taking that that fear of failure 
into the, I don't want to look back on my life and really wish that I had done things differently or wish that I hadn't, wish that I had tried harder or put some more effort into getting my business Mm. functioning. Mm -hmm. And as part of that too, is this massive fear of stagnating, of just like reaching a point in my life where I just kind of quit trying, quit learning new things, quit um, growing as a person. And, and I think that has also just been a really big, those two things have been really big behind driving me towards everything or forward in everything in my life from running a business and trying to move that forward to being that model for my kids of somebody who just continues to challenge myself or seek out new opportunities and um, what does that look like in your life and really wanting to continue growing if you will yeah wow yeah i see and okay so this is exactly why uh valerie and i headed off you guys know i'm all (laughs) about personal development personal growth like always striving to get that one percent better every day Mm -hmm. something that we can all work towards and um i mean that is as an entrepreneur and many of our viewers are entrepreneurs or solopreneurs like that jump in that leap of faith to get started and to move forward and knowing that like that is part of growing and expanding mm-hmm. ourselves I think that's such a huge huge thing and um uh I wanted to also say that Stephanie Johnson is the one that connected us okay and I, I, I just looked it up really really quick like because I was like <laughs> I, I, I knew the name was on the tip of my tongue so thank you Stephanie thank Johnson you. Thank you. Here we are. <laughs> I love it. So, um, so going to that that space, right? Of like, mm-hmm. where were you mentally during that time? Tell us a little bit more in depth about you know what that transition was starting to look like when you were like at that point of saying, "I'm shifting from this." Mm-hmm. It was really just looking at down the, let's say when I retire, whatever that looks like when you're an entrepreneur, just down the road when I'm older, looking back on my life and what are the things I want to remember? What are the things I want to have done with my life or not have done? Um, But more focused on the what, what do I want to have done and what does that look like? And that, okay, let's say uh, my business doesn't do as well as I wanted it to, but did I give it my all? Maybe it just, for whatever reason, wasn't the right fit in the right time or whatever that looks like, but wanting to know that I gave it everything that I had and gave it the time it deserved and continue to challenge myself and grow my business in a way that made sense for me versus just throwing in the towel because things got hard because I needed to learn a new skill. I needed to learn something new. I think if my business has greatly shifted to be more digital and virtual this year with this pandemic and I've learned new terms and more things than I thought I would I would not have guessed a year ago and it's greatly shifted things, but I think it shifted things for the better, but I was open to that and I was prepared. I was ready to learn that and to dive right in and to continue to see what that, where that journey was going to go. Um, and just wanting to know that I gave it my all, I think was kind of the big thing behind that. Yeah. And your biggest thing too, it's like you're a productivity coach, mm-hmm. Right. So, so helping, so tell us more about, about that. Like, how does that translate into, you know, what you're doing? Okay. So my business, I'm a productivity specialist. So it's working with um, mostly women, overcommitted women, overwhelmed moms, helping them um, figure out what they're doing every day, especially in this pandemic, where I think we're just running from one thing to another. We feel like we can't focus on our work because our kids are doing remote learning and they need our help. And it's really, what is it every day that we need to be focused on? And so I help women figure that out, take that overwhelm and turn it into this ability to know that what you're doing every day is what you need to be doing and to learn to let the rest go. Um, And for me, that's putting a lot of what advice I would give to others into practice in my own world. So, you know, how do I run a business while my two young kids are doing remote learning and my husband's working in the basement and we all need to eat all the time apparently, with young kids home yeah. <laughs> but really that it's that continued learning and then it's that okay my business needs to shift because this is the direction it's taking and we're in the middle of a pandemic and I can't do these things or I don't want to do these things anymore so now what what is next and exploring what that's going to be and looking into that and 
continuing to just kind of tinker, if you will. Yeah, I love, I love, um, so really what I hear that you're talking about is really building that awareness and, and coming to realizing that you, what you had is not what you want to keep having. Like you wanted more, you were striving to have more growth and, and have more opportunity and, and all of those great things. And I think like if anything that the viewers can take from what we just talked about is like building that awareness to be, be aware of where we are and if we're happy and, and having those things intentionally in our lives to be supporting the bigger vision, right? Valerie, you're talking about, you know, yeah. years down the road, do you want to know that you, you know, what you were doing now was making a difference and impacting mm -hmm. in certain ways? And when the answer is no, then you make change, you start to shift and see, well, what would it look like if I was doing something more productive, more fulfilling, mm -hmm. fill in the blank. And so really what I want you viewers to realize is like, we're talking about awareness here. We're talking about mm -hmm being conscious to what we're thinking and what we're dreaming about because like what Valerie was just saying is like because we're in a pandemic especially we're all running around trying to figure it all out a lot and that's how things don't get done that's how our productivity takes a back seat because mm -hmm. we're going emotionally from one thing to the next and just putting out the fires right so. absolutely yeah and I I hope that one thing or one thing that I have found with this pandemic Sorry, my cat has um, decided to be a little obnoxious currently. I'm sitting in her room, so she's- Oh, yes. What is going on? Um, she'll knock my lights over next. Um, <laughs> one of the things I love about this pandemic, and I know that so many people are feeling the overwhelm and the frustration and the, the fear through all of this, but I think on the flip side of that, it has forced us to take a step back from all of the craziness yeah. because we're not out doing all of these things, at least not as much as we were. And right. I think this is a great time to take that step back and be aware of, okay, I love that we're all having family dinners every night, that I'm not rushing around making dinner, thinking about it. We're not rushing from one activity to another. And I've heard a lot of moms say how much they love that. They love that we're home. They love that they're having dinner or breakfast or spending, having all this family time. And I know, so I feel like there's two sides of that, of like we're trying to run our businesses or keep our jobs while dealing with our kids. But um, there's also just this sense of, let's all just take a step back. Let's just take a breath, re-examine everything and start to do it differently because we can't. When else do we kind of get a restart? We just don't. Yeah, it's one of, those, one of those gifts where it's a catch 22, right? There's so much loss, so much pain in what we're dealing mm -hmm. with and, and growing through with the pandemic and at the same time, um, you know, we as entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, like we work diligently every day on our mindsets because you have to, you have to, yeah. you have to, there's no other choice than to say, you know, what is my purpose today? How am I showing up and really being aware of what we're thinking and how we're moving through our day. Mm -hmm. And granted, we are not perfect and that doesn't happen every day, but it's really that, um, the practice of being able to catch it faster, right? Because once mm -hmm. we get in that slump, isn't it easier to stay there? How many of us have binge watched Netflix and like all of a sudden it's just like, wow, I don't know how many seasons or episodes I just watched. That was like the black hole and <laughs> there's productivity out the door. Like you could have done so much so, yeah. impactful things to move the needle in your week or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that is with the relationship, the connections that you have with people that that's just such a huge thing. So speaking of like connections with people, I'm a huge human connection person. So Valerie, going back to your specific story and like how this was transpiring for you, um, tell us a little bit about like relationships, right? Like going from, from one to the other in that fear space, like, did you have a positive or negative um, reaction to people in like your connections and your personal relationships? Tell us a little bit about that. Mm, great question. So I'm going to go with a mixed answer, um, both yes and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes and. <laughs> um, so it was a lot of you know, taking that leap. Um, I had a fully supportive husband who was behind that, which I think was helpful and has long been helpful, um, yeah. especially in trying to balance a business now 
um, between all of this uh, or just in the middle of a pandemic, but I think related to you know, your question, it's it's trying to build that team or that support or find that network of people who, who get your vision and are gonna support you through it. And not everybody does. And so it's really, and I'm not sure for a while I even knew what my vision was. I just knew I wanted this business that I did this in. And I started out as a professional organizer before it shifted to productivity. Um, and and my the productivity piece came from years of listening to women and clients talk about how busy they were. And me just like, what does that even mean? Like, what are you busy doing? What am I busy doing? I don't even know. I just told you I was busy, but if you ask me- We what, all have the same 24 hours. Like, I don't where know. Where does your time like, go in comparison to mine? Yeah, and so really just wanting to be focused on that. What does that mean? What does busy mean? What does productivity mean? Are we doing the right things, as you said, to like move the needle forward? And then, so I think it's it's building that team and making sure that I'm meeting with people who either have done it, and so they I have some a path to follow or guidance or support or colleagues who can um, support me on that road, and just trying to help me figure out what that vision is. And so it's that that has changed over the years in terms of who it is that has helped me, um, but I think it's. It's kind of what you need. I'm not even sure if that answers your question, but hopefully it does. Really <laughs> it does. It does. I think so community and mm -hmm. um, like support is definitely, those are two of my very core things that I always talk about that I, that I always am pulling through. Um, I have a virtual workspace and community called mm -hmm. On Purpose with Purpose that is literally dedicated to exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, you mentioned, um, people that understand your vision or that are, can support like the vision that you have. And then you're like, I'm not even sure I have the time I knew what that was. And then you're still looking for support. And that's why we created this space that we created is because you don't have to know everyone's complete vision and you don't have to know, you need to know your daily purpose, like what you're doing today to keep moving one step forward instead mm -hmm. of being like, mm, I'm going to tiptoe forward and then fall back those two steps it's the progression of those small celebrations that really get the momentum flowing and, and rolling forward. So yes. I love what you're saying. And, and community is huge because we have disbelief in ourselves so much that we have to have positive support systems to tap into, whether that's a podcast that you listen to that's positive and gives you reinforcement mm -hmm. about what you're going for, or an actual coach for yourself to tap into or a, a community online that you can actually find support within there and be able to be seen and heard in what you're going for because we don't have a boss patting us on the head saying that you're doing a great job and your clients <laughs> don't always say, hey, you're, you know, this is really changing my life. Even though we feel that sometimes, sometimes we just don't. We just don't and it's that. really that the productivity will be less when we don't have that extra support and community. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, relationships are a huge part in our journey in life. And as humans, we need that connection for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that's so important to have. So that's good. Um, so, okay. My next question then is about like, um, like, yes, there you, you were like, okay, what do I want? And, and thinking about like the future that way, was there anything or was the pandemic your like last straw that you were like, okay, like this is a really good time. Was there anything that was really like an event or anything that happened that you really started to dive in and think about it or tell us a little bit more about that? Um, I'm not sure that there has been any specific like true turning point or event that was really like this, it's time to take the leap or not. Okay. I think uh, this pandemic for me has certainly clarified my vision in terms of like the last couple of years, I've shifted from in-person organizing to productivity coaching and trying to kind of figure out what that's gonna look like. Is it one-on-one -on -one coaching? Is it online courses? Is it a virtual community? What does it look like? And this pandemic has really clarified what I want that to look like for me from a shift from the one-on-one -on -one to I can have a bigger impact in a virtual community where I can work with people in a group and one-on-one -on -one where necessary. They can take my classes and do all of these things and I can just have a bigger impact 
And that clarity has come through this pandemic of knowing that my target market or the, the women I work with don't have time to deal with their time. And so how can I get in there and like little bits and pieces and be like, you do try this. I'll see you <laughs> next week. And then the following would be like, let's try this one. How's this working? How did, and so it's like, let's, let's move that needle or shift that ever so slightly as we're going through all of this and just really trying to clarify how to do that. And I think it will, whether we're in a pandemic or not, kind of, I have this vision now of what I want this to look like. And it might not have happened had this pandemic not happened. Um, so I, I think that was, it was a little more long. It was longer than a, an, a meet, like a one day or a, an event, but it yeah. was kind of, I don't know if the pandemic counts as an event, but it was a, a thing in the <laughs> really long, painful event. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. No, and I think that's so true. And I asked that too, because, you know, everyone, I feel like this is something that we need to be debunking, right? Like that people mm -hmm. are just like, I never had this profound moment mm -hmm. of clarity. And it's like, no, we get into action mm -hmm. and we start and that's where the clarity comes from. It comes from, yeah. It's the like, this is what I want my end goal to be, or this is how or who. And it's not I just want. gonna go like this. We don't just right. wake up and have it. And that's gonna shift. And I think that's part of that lifelong learning thing too. Like where yeah. I think my business, I want it to be now might not be where it is five years from now. Or I might be working with the same people, but I've shifted how I reach them or I've shifted yes. how I teach them or whatever that looks like. It's, it has to evolve if we want to keep it functioning and moving forward and helpful, if you will. Mm. Yes. So true. And, and, and right. And like our impact rises too. Like, so it makes sense that we're raising the ante and like how we're serving our clients and how we're serving our world because we're rising, we're growing. So naturally we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're able to help with higher level crisis higher level struggles with our clients so it makes sense that we're all like growing through it and, and being able to impact more in, in different ways on different levels throughout the transitions of our business and the transformations that happen mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and um i think that's great so I'm curious too like what advice would you give the viewers for you know if they're in the feeling that situation like mm -hmm. you're describing um, what would be advice that you would give them? Um, so I'm a believer in tiny little steps, just little movements every day. And it leads to big changes, I feel, over time. So on one side, I think it's totally fine to take a step back from some of it, to take that day to binge watch Netflix, take a break, um, just kind of refill your cup drink hot chocolate all day whatever that looks like take care of yourself and step back from it and I find when because I especially as entrepreneurs and possibly even as women we don't know how to take breaks we don't know how to take a step back because we feel like we have to constantly be doing 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 I mean I know my to-do list for my business is sometimes I just want to chuck it out the window there's so much on there and I'm just like I, this is not going to happen but if I go okay today these are the three things that I'm going to do to move the needle forward. I'm going to focus on those. I'm going to hide the rest of the list. I'm going to focus on these things. And so knowing, and maybe you don't know what that end goal is. So then maybe right now it's really that ex exploring piece. Maybe it's finding a coach or finding a community that can help you find the right questions to figure that out. Or maybe it's just picking a direction and going with it seeing what happens and see how it feels and that's how you're going to learn what makes sense for you and learn what resonates with you and try it out and just kind of explore that and if it doesn't work then you can cross that off your list you know that's not something you want to do and let's go try this other option and or it might lead to something totally different and unexpected that you never would have found otherwise but is even more awesome than what you thought you wanted but you have no idea and so it's just taking that step just a little bit every day, exploring something new. It could be reading a book or listening to a podcast or whatever that might be, but just exploring something and try, having that faith that you're going to figure it out. Yeah, I think that, so the two thing, things that I pulled from that is, you know, get into action, 
Mm -hmm. And so, so decide, get into action. And then, um, the third one that I pulled through is belief, right? Believe mm -hmm. in yourself, believe that the answer is going to be there. Believe that you're following, you know, what feels right. And that is right. Whatever that is for mm -hmm. you. So if it's like, oh, I have all these things to do and I need to slow down, I'm tired or like something like, okay, well, listen to that. And the to-do list can wait or, you know, vice versa. So Mm -hmm. decide get into action and then mm -hmm. believe that the actions that you're taking will lead you to the next step because that's how that momentum is is built up yep yeah, i love it absolutely. i love it so you mentioned five years and something <laughs> i love is i'm a visionary so i love asking this question because one it's going to mark a time in your life right now that you can like speak things into existence and what that looks like for you so I love asking the question, you know, you're, you know how to live fearlessly, as I say, right? Because it's not about having no fear. It's about knowing that every day there's fear in things that we're doing, but we're making the conscious decisions to walk through them and knowing that growth is on the other side. Mm -hmm. So you, you're at a place where you know that about fear and you live more fearlessly. So five years from today, where do you see yourself? 2025. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to have a teenager, which is kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> Reality <doing> check. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to have a teenager. So a couple of things in there. Um, one thing that we have not as a family have not been doing much of, um, in the last few years is traveling as much as we really want to. Mm. And that one thing that has come out of this pandemic and the shift that I've seen in my business is wanting to have a life where at least in the summers, my husband and I can work from anywhere. So that might mean buying a camper and like spending our summers traveling around the U.S., just working from wherever we are and exploring and trying new things and growing, whatever that means. Um, maybe having- Locationally in independent is what one of my last guests told me that's yes. called locationally independent. And I, I was like- listened to that one and I was like, I love that. I love that <laughs> idea. And I'm not, I, and because I also want roots. I want to have a house yeah. and like a space that I like- the roots, but then we also have this ability to live nomadically or the locationally independent. Um, and I love that. Yes. Uh, so we want to just travel and be able to do that. And I, um, I have grand plans for my business and kind of this little mini empire that I would love to, to see happen. That isn't just me working one-on-one -on -one with people, but just this, this growth that I could see happening in the next few years with that. Um, yeah, those are the big things, but traveling, we definitely need to travel more because once my kids are teenagers, yeah. they're not going to want to do such things with me. So we got to yeah, get, so we're going to say five years or sooner. We're doing that. <laughs> we're, we're doing that, right? It's because in five yes. years, we have a teenager. So it's five years or sooner, man. Ooh. We're going to, we're going <laughs> to rev that up because yeah, once yes. it opens up, that's what I'm saying too. Um, I love it. I love that so much because it, that's where we make those memories and those experiences. And you talking about, you know, looking back on your life, that's the number one thing we will never regret. We will never regret taking the time to do the things that our kids are going to remember, that we can remember that, mm -hmm. you know, you aren't going to learn in a classroom <laughs> you, nice. and, and build that connection with your family anywhere else than getting out and taking the actions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yep. I love that so much. This was so great, Valerie. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing mm -hmm. more about your story and how you are working and moving through fear on another level. Um, where is the best place for the viewers to connect with you? Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the name of my business is Home Most Simple. And you can find me on Instagram or Facebook would probably be the two best places or sign up for my newsletter if you want to be the first to know of anything fun that I'm doing. Um, but probably Instagram has become my new favorite place. I just joined it this fall. So <laughs> find me there. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And it's just your handle is your business name. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. I love it. Well, everyone that's watching, thank you for joining us. Love yourself and live fearlessly. And Valerie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. <laughs>